everybody who's out there. If you're right down out there, there. It's pretty early here. What time is it? Um, let's see. 6.51, 7 o'clock. Um, I want to cover some things in the Discord that I just came across. I just want, I need to do it with voice because I don't, I don't think the written words are good sometimes for disagreement because people get pissed. So, um, I need to change my colors here for a second. I had a fun time last night playing with that. Um, and I've had my coffee, so I'm, I'm not angry or anything, but there's a lots of controversy in the discord. So I'm just going to know that it's going to be at the beginning of this. And I'm going to actually tag it. And I'm going to, I'm going to publish some of my answers to this, even though, um, it's not going to be very well cleaned up. So... I might have to make this a regular segment. Mr. Rob answers questions in the Discord because I don't normally have Discord on. So I'm going to repeat all this and bake it a little bit better. All right. So, um, do, 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 do. once again, good morning, everybody. Uh, I've got my coffee here. As I usually do when I wake up, I go through my email, I go through my um, discords that I may have missed. I'm finding the discord has to be done as a session instead of real time, unfortunately, because of the nature of the communication in discord. A lot of times there's stuff going on that, um, some of which is semi-private. So, um, and I, you know, I, I can't usually address that on stream and I've been I've been streaming my desktop lately because I've been showing other things I've been doing so so I have not chosen to be doing discord on stream unless I'm really prepared for it which I've done today um the last time that I checked in on discord has to have been god when was it the 30th of January so what are we now the 15th of February and there has been a lot of stuff in my Discord channel I probably shouldn't have opened my channel without being available to answer questions in there, which I, I can't be. I mean, it's just it's just too much. There's just too much going on. If I were to answer every single thing, I would never get anything done. So, but I have, I have, however, become somewhat concerned about what's going on in here. So let me just express myself first on this point. I do have a, a skill stack Discord over here. Um, that is for skill stack members only and the rules there, the code of conduct there is pretty strict um, if you actively campaign against the standards that I'm teaching um, that's a violation and you know I can remove you for that I know that's somewhat dictatorial <laughs> but I don't care if you were to, if you were to learn martial arts um, in fact there's a fun let me turn this down there's a fun there's a fun video with Mr. Miyagi, and um, I'm not going to show it. Actually, maybe I'll show it. It's a small one. Mr. Miyagi from YouTube. This is a really amazing video. It makes me sort of cry sometimes. Actually, I know that sounds lame, but I just love it. So, Mr. Miyagi. Um, here it is. The wax on, wax off. You're supposed to teach, I'm supposed to learn. They made a deal. I learned plenty. I learned how to sand your decks, maybe. I washed your car, paint your house, paint your fence. I learned plenty, right? Not everything is as seen. Oh, bullshit. I'm going home, man. Daniel-san. Daniel-san. What? Come here. Show me Sandefloor. I can't move my arm, all right? 
This is, there weren't memes back then, but this would have been a meme for sure. Mr. Miyagi's the actor. Show me. How did you do that? Show! 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 Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Show me. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. Sand the floor. I never get tired of this. This is so great. Send the floor. Send the floor. Send the floor. Wax on, wax off. Hey. Hey. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Concentrate. Concentrate. Look at my eye. Come inside. It's got to be one of the best scenes ever filmed. It's like the frogs. Hmm, excuse me. Paint the fence. Daniel sounds like, whoa, something's going on here. I kind of think Daniel son looks like my youngest son. Always look I. Always look I. Show me wax on, wax off. Show. Who votes down yeah. this video? Oh, look. That. Oh. That. That. Surprise. Show me pen to fence. Hey. Hey. That. That. Show me side to side. Yes! 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 Show me sand of floor. Hats! Race! 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 Yush. Oh, yush. Stop! Stop! Oi. Who's the guy? Come back tomorrow. It's like, whoa, dude. This is bullshit. And now look at him. You know, it's a dramatization, right? But it's real. And some of the stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm not Miyagi. I want to be a Miyagi. I want to desperately. I mean, I... I desperately want to consider myself as good as a Mr. Miyagi someday. And, but, you know, the, the point I'm trying to make is that Mr. Miyagi learned a particular type of martial arts. And if Mr. Miyagi were to change his methods in the middle based on a different approach, which is what he goes up against, right? He goes up against karate versus like his version of karate, which is kind of different you know a different style i suppose they're both, both effective obviously or they wouldn't have made it to the finals and all that stuff it's a good movie it's a good it's a retro movie but it's really good and so when i pull up the discord and i you know when i my first reaction when i see stuff that's telling people to do things directly against what i'm teaching uh my reaction is to have kind of a mr miyagi moment so i'm like why are you doing that? You're going to, you're going to, they're never going to, you're confusing people. And this is actually part of a much bigger issue that I'm only going to touch on now because I'm going to go through the discord chat, but that really needs a video. And I'm not talking about a video about editors. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a video about learning and styles and, you know, finding your way. And, you know, there's a lot of, people who wanted to learn karate who did not go to Mr. Miyagi. They went to other people. And that's totally, totally okay. They're not worse people for it. Um, but when you learn a particular style of martial arts, and I, like growing up I did, I learned um, something, something a guy had 
called um, Kung Kwon Do. It was his own version of martial arts. It was a combination of Taekwondo and Kung Fu, and it was awesome. <laughs> and it really, I really appreciated it. I, I, in fact, I, I probably should go back to it. I mean, I was really sort of blessed is the only word that comes to mind to have been able to learn from him. I didn't get very far in it. I got, you know, enough um, learning in it to increase my confidence and make me capable of, of doing some things. Um, but I didn't, you know, and the reason I did is because I learned it his way. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not forcing this in our discord here. In our discord here, I'm not, I'm not forcing my way on people. I'm just asking for the respect that you would give Mr. Miyagi if you are going to talk about something. Um, you would never say things like, uh, Mr. Miyagi's karate method is stupid, you know, um, or is uncool or something like that. I mean, and I, I myself need to learn this lesson constantly. And as I'm reminded in my chats and I'm going to, I'm going to, um, throw myself under the bus here too, as we go through this with discord. But before I do, I just want to, I just want to talk about the principles that I want to have, even if I don't always follow them myself. And that's that we kind of agree to disagree, but that, um, hopefully you know, people that are listening to my stream and that are that they consider what I have to offer because I'm certainly considering what you have to offer and what you are bringing to the table. Uh, I was on a stream the other day where a, a person was coding Python in Nano. <laughs> and if you know me, you know that that's not my thing. I mean, it's really not my thing. I've been very vocal. I've been at a couple times probably inappropriate about how I talked about it. And I'm correcting myself on that. Sometimes there are opinions, sometimes there's styles, and sometimes there's stuff that's just wrong. It's definitely true that there are some martial arts styles that are more effective than other styles, and that's an age-old argument, right? But it's true, and in fact, you know, some people can, you know, there's people always try to say, oh, this one is, it's just a matter of how good you are at the practice. Oh, I think there's certain practices that are objectively better than others, for, for depending on the situation. And that's, that's really where I want to go with this, depending on the situation. You know, if you're if you're facing a particular type of attacker, kung fu will work better than ta or taekwondo, uh, which you know redirects energy and all that, might work better than a full on assault like with karate. So, so it really depends on the style, and I and I'm glad I thought of that because I'm as I go into the editor conversation, which we're going to do today a little bit, uh, I'm kind of you know practicing is kind of a preview of what I'm going to do in my editor video. That'll probably be the most controversial video I ever make, but I'm going to make an editor video and it's going to largely parallel this difference in styles for martial arts. So, um, so with that, I'm going to go into this. It's going to get a little negative. I'm going to try to keep it not negative. I'm going to read the comments as they are in the discord. Uh, and I just want to warn everybody, um, going forward, um, that if you put something in the discord it will be read on public chat and it will likely be posted to a video on youtube so if you have a position be ready and the way you present your position be ready to defend it because i i've learned that lesson the hard way myself um, there's many things that i've put out there where i was very I, I do believe in forgiveness and people should be able to change their minds and they shouldn't be judged based on their opinions and we're going to talk about that too in a second so with all of that lead in um, we're going to go down and I'm going to just kind of scroll down here. So, um, there we go. Uh, you guys, you guys seen how long it takes to add two numbers. This is kind of a joke, fun thing. That was kind of cool, Raritan, but I, I did not look at it. That site is so funny. Site 101. And then I had my coding your eyes out, burning your eyes out. Yes, that's my last post. What? Uh, okay, so again, we're just streaming through the Discord to go through the stuff that I've missed for, for the last two weeks. On stream for a bit, uh, I'm going to screw around with IRC clients. Now, Chatty. Chatty's a good one. I saw that if you like it. I'm more of a hex chat guy. Once again, you know, best tool for the job. Hex chat comes with Linux Mint. It's the same tool that's used to check in with support forums on Mint. Um, and it allows you to connect to Freenom and a bunch of other things. And Chatty may allow that, but I'm I'm more interested in in sort of what the 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 standard is, and right now the standard is HexChat. There's no question that that's overwhelmingly the case. So then we go here. Written in Java, use this to synchronize the memory. I use it. Yeah, no way. I'm touching Chatty at all ever. Um, let's see. Get get C. Nice. Would it be have? 
would be nice to have a CLI, but I want Twitch emotes. I'm not a fan of Twitch emotes. Um, I mean, they're nice and all they're for some people, but I'm not at all into them. So I just want a communications tool. So I'm, I'm okay with hex chat. Sir, if, if, uh, if one is nerd, nerd enough, one can map Twitch emotes to, into Unicode distance playing code points and use a customized font with CLI. Well, that's cool. Um, you can actually, by the way, you, if you if you know the word for a Twitch emote, you can just type it in IRC and it'll be converted. I found that out. So so you can actually, if you wanted to set up hotkeys or something for your hex chat, you could do that. I'm not going to talk about why I use hex chat over uh, WeChat and IRC, uh, IRC client. That is the command line terminal only in this video. But at some point when we talk about, I will do a video on hex chat and I'll talk about that. Um, here we go. Gabe Art Discord. Why Discord is switching from Go to Rust. This was this big controversial topic. Uh, I'll cover that in the news someday, but not here. Um, uh, that was, I had actually already read it. It was, that's pretty late post. It had been around for a while. That came up on the Golang news group. Uh, Scream I use Chatty was uh, when streaming. It's nice. Rob, some news for you. Rust wins over Go for performance. Well, of course it does. I don't need to be told that. I mean, it doesn't have garbage collection, and it depends on what you want. And this is the same. He's sending the same thing. Um, this is not true at all, by the way. This 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 is this is like an oversimplification of the issue, like massive oversimplification. If you don't believe me, go read the Golang News Group. Nobody who's writing anything like this is reading that or even signed up for it. Even though you know Eric S. Raymond and and Rob Pike and all these fantastic science computer scientists and programmers have, who have developed multiple languages are commenting on this issue. Uh, and I've actually tweeted about this issue. If you care to actually understand my position on it, um, you can read uh, my position on on that on Twitter, um, where, I've, where I've basically cut and paste with this. The, the biggest problem with this debate is how uninformed the Discord team is. They, first of all, they compared 1.9 version of go we're now at 1.14 to the latest version of rust and secondly they used go for something they never should have uh, after they described the component they should never ever ever have used go and and everybody on the go list is like well duh <laughs> it's kind of funny because the whole discord team is really showing how clueless they are and that's fine. It's funny because they don't even feel compelled to explain themselves to anybody else publicly. They just are having this kind of internal discussion about, oh, isn't it kind of cute that the Discord kids over here have decided to to actually use the right tool for the job? <laughs> oh, and isn't it neat that they used 1.9 and then they blasted it out on Medium of all places? <laughs> it's like very scientific, right? So th I got I got no love for the Discord team anymore after that. That's it's extremely unprofessional and extremely naive and novice. And so everybody who's been in languages and sciences, people who have built operating systems are just shaking their head and like looking the other way. And it's kind of fun because when you're on the go, when you're in the go nuts list, you're like, they kind of know that, that, that this barrier to entry that all these other people don't even know they exist. So they, they kind of know that. So they kind of talk amongst themselves in very respectful, but like, you know, different ways. And it's just so much fun to see them throw other people under the bus and just go, oh, okay. <laughs> because because there's, they've got so much more wisdom behind them. And they sort of know that nobody's going to listen. And I, and I don't. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the shallow person who has to make a comment saying, you, the fact that you compared 1.9, this is my, my comment to, the, to this thing. I said, you know, the fact that you guys compared 1.9 version of go to the most recent version and you don't know that you can disable garbage collection says everything i need to know about this post so that was you know <laughs> that's what i think about that so um so when someone says hey here's some news for you and you tell me this four days after i read the news myself and listened to eric s raymond who you may not even know who he is talk about it then i'm like mm, that's kind of nice raritan <laughs> So, I mean, I appreciate the effort, but yeah, I knew that. Not only did I know it, I'd already commented by the time you told me. And, you know, the position on this is completely uninformed. So, you know, I just, anyway, it's it's frustrating for me because, I see, I ended up screwing around with Bluetooth piano bars instead of spending much time on chatty, but I got it working great. I mentioned to Rob at the end of the, at the, end of the twit this week in tech, Backstory, this this was started by a name named Leo Laporte, blah, 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 blah. He used the work. 
The screen here is basically oh, very cool, very very cool. If his podcast is twit.tv, his own web show podcast, and now they have a whole bunch of different shows spanning security. Google, this is super cool. Thank you for Scream. I'm gonna have to go look at that. I'm definitely gonna bookmark that. In fact, I'm gonna put that in my to-do list. This is why I like Discord. But I, I feel bad that I wasn't able to to get to that at the time. That's why I'm doing this now. Um, I'm going to say research twit. Is it twit.tv? Twit.tv? All right. So what else we got? Um, spicing up my Vim. Oh, did I take my thing down? Whoops. Spicing up my Vim with a bunch of .txt IMAPs to make homework faster. That's what I'm talking about. Now that can be done with Emacs. That could be done with VS Code. Um, it can be done with lots of things. But, um, you know, I think Vim is one of the better options. Now, um, Aaron is in college and he's pursuing the sciences. So for him, if he were to choose to use Emacs with Vim bindings, I would say that's a natural choice. He's also very, 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 very pro Python. Very hard to not. And I'm like, okay. I mean, if you're going to be doing science only, you know, then yeah, there's a strong bias for Python and R and Emacs and Julia, Jupyter Notebooks, sorry, and Julia for that matter. So it's, that's the domain. That's the domain and that's what they use. I do think that other tools are going to fit into that domain. And I think Vim is one of them. But do you have as critical a need to VI's primary, you know, value proposition is it can be used anywhere. So do you have a critical need to do that if you are in, an astronomer or, you know, data scientist or machine, you know, learning kind of coder? Maybe not. You know, maybe you're going to be okay with, a, with a, even a fat IDE, you know. So... So yeah, I, I like Vim and I and I taught Vim here because that's what I teach. But those people who are going into the sciences might, you know, reach out side of their shell and actually try some of these other editors. You know, I hate Emacs, I'll never use it. But there might there might be some value for, for somebody in that industry. Spicy Vim is the best Vim. I've been reading your blog. This is this is where Scream takes me to task. I love it. He really has a knack for finding all of my my bad stuff out there and while I go over this I want everyone to understand that I when I blog I blog how I feel in the moment and sometimes that moment is rather inflamed and I I do that because I find blogging very cathartic I find it a way for me to get out what I what I think uh, I feel like I can do that now on the stream somewhat and I also don't think that we should be that we should shy away from our moments of like intense passion on a thing even if we're wrong and that we should forgive each other for making really lame mistakes in the past or for presenting things incorrectly and all that. And I've got tons and tons of mistakes out there in this in this case. You know, it depends though, right? Because as soon as you start personally attacking someone, then you cross the line, right? And there needs to be some sort of consequence. And I've removed people from my community before for, because of that. I've had people in my community who have attacked other people for using Microsoft in the Discord. And I said, let's have a talk. And, and one, in one case, the, the mother decided to just take him out. And um, so there, there, there is a line. And, you know, I've, I've crossed it myself, too, sometimes. Um, but we just need to know where that line is and how not to, to, to do it. If it's your personal blog, you're entitled to say whatever the fuck you want. And, and that you don't really have to feel like you have to defend yourself. That's not what blogs are for. They're not for inciting, you know, violence, but they're your personal blog. And this this quote that he's taking is from my personal blog. Okay, so he reads here. Anyway, that's why I need to make videos again, because most programmers learn everything from videos. Unfortunately, until I can get them convinced my words are better than videos, I need to play the lame ass game. <laughs> Actually, chuckling at myself there because I know I remember that moment. There was like people that would spend hours and hours watching Udemy and YouTube to try to learn to code and they get really frustrated and they they were I mean the word reticent you know comes to mind they just did not want to pick up a book 
In fact, I've had people, while they're here, you know, not even did they not want to pick up a book, they didn't, they didn't want to look at the actual syntax that was described in the thing. So for example, last night somebody was asking me um, about double quotes and quotes, single quotes in HTML. And, you know, we found a whole bunch of videos on it. And, but there was no, no, I mean, it took me, even me, it took me, I mean, at that point, I had to, well, you know what, let's just go to the spe to the standard and look. So I opened up HTML5, the, the working group HTML5, and sure enough, there it was, you know, and it was, it was very explicit. In fact, it even said you don't need them. That was the first thing it said. And then it said you can use single quotes. Then it said you can use double quotes. My point is, is that if more people were to go straight to the docs or straight to written material, which almost always is better than video. Not always, I imagine, but almost always in my experience is better. They would they would be less inclined to make mistakes. They would they would do better, but they don't. And I can this next couple of comments from Scream here uh, are pretty much um, I think him getting a little offended at the fact that uh, that I, he thinks I'm putting down the work people put in to make videos. I'm certainly not doing that. I just want to be really clear on that. He goes, he wrote, he wrote a textbook, uh, and thought it was so much work. A well-produced video is about five hours of work. It certainly is. I have made hundreds. And there were times I didn't have time. The students blame me, would give me, uh, during the headlights look when I didn't have a video for them after a reading was asked him to speak in Klingon. <laughs> like I said, plenty to talk about next week. So, I don't, I don't, in fact, now that I reread it, I don't think that Scream is particularly angry at me for saying that. I think, I think he's, um, bless their normie hearts <laughs> um i think that um this is just again this is a moment of frustration I, I definitely understand how much work it takes to make videos this is why i stopped so uh i did videos for second life i did an entire series for beginners that i made for ibm as well as the community the open sim community and then i made um uh I made, I'll actually probably go find those someday. They're kind of fun. And then I made, um, I made all, a lot of videos for the, the web course that I taught for the college. And um, they take a tremendous amount of work to do right. If you're going to have, you know, animation and if you're going to have all the stuff that people do. Um, and I think this was about the same time. I found one video that was so well polished. It had animations. It had multiple diagrams. And the content was just so bad. I mean, it was really bad. It wasn't even nearly current about the language that they were teaching. I can't remember what it was. I, I, I can see it in my mind, but I can't remember what it was. Um, and so, you know, this is why I, I've always been such so hesitant to come back to video. I do think streaming is the answer. And if, if you've been following my blog, I, I've been, you probably haven't been, if, but I, I do believe blogging is the future uh, but I, uh, you know, doing it like one, one thought at a time, but supplementing that with, with voice or video is powerful because people can watch it and listen to it in their car. There's lots of reasons for video. And so I'm willing to give it another shot, but I'm not going to keep doing it if it means that I have to add five hours to my day because I'm already f way behind on my goals that I want to accomplish. So anyway, um, that one time I decided to produce a proper video with cut illustrations, transitions, all sorts of stuff. Never again. <laughs> yeah. Because because it's just too hard. I mean, it, it, it is nice, but you cannot produce content fast enough to keep up with pace. Uh, I've already tried this. I tried to do news. You know, I tried to do a news segment where I would collect everything together. And just yesterday, I threw that out and said, "You know what? I'm just going to read my news on. I'm going to read my news on stream and talk about it while I'm reading it. So you're going to get my initial reaction right away, live. <laughs> you know, and am I gonna am I gonna comment on that all the time? Am I gonna am I gonna post those highlights? Probably not, because that takes too much time. I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing I I've, I've considered doing there is is possibly like double streaming to YouTube so that those saved news reviews go go there. But I'm probably not even going to do that. I mean, that's just too much work. So what I'm probably going to do is make my news uh, evaluations every day um, subscriber-only video on demand. 
actually no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them live, but the video on demand coverage of my news will be probably, um, probably video on demand, like for subscribers because I'm very raw in there and I don't, I don't want, you know, I want people who have, are willing to subscribe, you know, that are interested in what I have to say to that degree to hear it. I don't, I'm not really interested in, in, uh, participating in a, in a, a big dialogue with people who aren't willing to subscribe because it takes a lot of time. Okay. So, uh, let's see. It's, I'm mowing our lawn. It's about brainless. All you have something clean and nice in the end, but it's something I, I really need to be in the mood to have time for. Completely agree. I prefer to consult a written article myself as I read scan words for keywords. I do this. This is me. I'm with the Cerbic on this one. Um, but in cases for video for presentation, especially for noob tutorials, basically if the video creator uses the visual space as some souped up blackboard to accentuate the material, I think it could be easier to digest for sure. For sure. Good points, the Cerbic. Raritan, what do you guys, what do you guys use to nav around file systems in shell? I use the shell. Oh, I think this is a funny one. This is like the question I had the other day. Why do you CD into a directory? And any any experienced system administrator will chuckle at that. Um, because it's really hard that I I can't I cannot describe. I mean, there's you shouldn't have to have a hotkey for everything. Use the Linux commands. Use what is there. CD is how I get around the file system. Tree, LS, PWD. That's how anybody gets around the file system who's in cybersecurity or in system administration. They don't need some tool, some nerd tree to help them get around their file system. In fact, that kind of question, and the reason I'm saying this is because I want to help you guys avoid absolute ridicule in the industry. Asking a question, why do I need to CD into a directory, is so noob and naive that it will get you laughed out of certain Linux meetups and groups. I'm not kidding. So I'm just trying to save y'all from some of these considerations because you're absolutely brilliant people and I don't want you to run it. I don't want that, that brilliance to be tainted by by some sort of, you know, beginner thing like this you should not have to ask the question how do i get nav around my file system in the shell you use the shell commands all right i'm not sure what you mean by nav around the system and that's the proper way to respond to that command line file manager that's what he's asking i don't like ranger from what i've seen here's some examples so so this is the thing with raritan and he continues to do and and i'm i'm going to call him on it he's always looking for the shortcut always he's looking for the hotkey he's looking for the alias he's looking for the tool rather than using what's already there and that's that's fine for somebody who might be going into computer science or programming and doesn't ever leave their computer but i think the more important approach here is to actually learn the tools that exist not the extra little thing that utility that somebody made use the things that exist and keep all of your customizations in your RC files because if you need to have something portable, that's the most portable, but even that you're not going to have. All right. This, this is also why Z shell is absolute shit and nobody should use it. Getting used to being able to CD into a thing because you're too lame or lazy to CD directly into the thing and use the actual path or use tab completion. This is the thing that makes me nuts. People who use CD with Z shell, think that they're being efficient because it's getting them right to their directory when the, what they could have done instead is use tab completion to get there it's a few more keystrokes but it's supported on every operating system there's no reason the z shell should do that and and we'll have a, a video on z shell and why i i despise it and we can we can talk about all of its flaws and you can tell me why i'm wrong and you can you can bring up use cases where you believe that that i haven't covered and i want to be challenged on this because to this day not a single person has told me something in z shell that is compelling enough to use it so um and every single thing that's been brought up can be easily done with bash easily so why 
do Z Show because this is the default show on Mac and you're happy with it, that's fine. If that's if that's what you think. Um, okay, I use Z a bit, but I also have it souped up with FC blah blah blah. Yeah, see anybody who's doing Z to get to a thing, that's like, no. The the no, just no. I mean, if you, if you really want that, you can write that as a command line function, and bash and be done. You don't need Z shell. It's like, but that, that particular thing, I mean, it's that particular little alias that you're talking about writing. I could write that in maybe, I would say probably 20 lines of bash. So I just don't understand. Why are you throwing out shell compatibility with like 90% of deployed Linux systems just because you want some little thing? I, unless you're never leaving that, that shell. All right, um, and Rangers on my list, blah, 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 okay. CD into the home directory, CD dash, we're going back to the previous, saves me all the time. I use that all the time, good job, Scream. <laughs> um, that's everywhere, right? A lot of people, I'm, I'm surprised how many people don't know that CD with no no arguments goes into their home directory. I, 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 I run into that a lot. And, and most people know CD dash that I've run into, but CD doesn't. Uh, I actually alias exa to CD because I like the highlighting visual aspect better. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I've seen that one before. I have to give that a look. But still, I, I don't. You'd have to detect whether CD was exa was on the system, and that's probably a good thing to do. You know, if there's an exa, then alias. Otherwise, don't. Mm. I just use PWD. This is why I'm always CD PWD CD PWD. If I really, really need to know where to go, I use PWD. Auto LS when I to do auto LS when I see the directory. Well, no way. There's no way I would ever add that. That's way too verbose. It's two letters. I'll type them. All right. What else we got? Hell of a habit chaining CD and LS together. That takes care. Oh boy, here he goes. Rob's blog. Man, I wish he would. Somebody who's very, very. <laughs> he always finds my if you can make even a half decent game that will run on an average Chromebook these shitty school districts are buying everyone then buying everyone then you automatically sell it to all of them at the same time <laughs> I have a decent a half decent educational game that will run on an average Chromebook don't know if shitty school districts will care though it's probably true and then somebody's posting Vim Adventures which I, I kind of find cute um, who posted this? Oh, yeah. We know. We, we, we've been doing Vim Adventures for seven years. It's, it's, it, we actually bought it for a while. Um, it's not, it's not complete. Um, it, it is fun. It's really fun the first time. But it's not, uh, um, it's, it's not, uh, nearly good enough. The best way to learn Vim is to do the Vim tutorial and or to, to just learn it. And I, I know this because I've tested lots and lots of people on Vim and I'm not, you know, dozens or more, hundreds. And they they like the game, but it, but because the game isn't associated with them editing a file, it does, the learning doesn't transfer over until they actually start editing a file. So once again, I keep coming back to this point, use real tools. If you want to learn Vim, use Vim. If you want to learn JavaScript, use JavaScript. Don't use a game that teaches you JavaScript. Use JavaScript. Those those other things that that help you help you learn. Some of them are better than others, but every layer you add that separates you from the actual tool is something that keeps you from being able to learn the thing and you add too many of those and the, the distraction away from the actual learning is enough to make your, your learning not even apply when you get on it when you get on the command line so and the reason for that is because you're not just learning Vim for example you're learning a little bit of Bash as well you're learning a bit it, basically when you learn Vim you really have to learn the shell navigation as well because you've got to you've got to move into the directory and then you've got to edit 
you got to learn how to eg exit and then go someplace else and edit another file. So it, the, the process of editing files is much larger than learning the keys for Vim. And so my approach to Vim is to have them do the tutorial, which I think is dated. I'm making my own version of it, actually. The, it was made by a bunch of guys in college um, to learn Vim. It got made part of the standard of the, of the Vim distribution. It's never, ever been updated. And some of the stuff in it's wrong, and some, some of the shortcuts have better options. Um, like changing stuff to the end of a line, you know, capital C. So I, I have I have a whole cheat sheet prepared and I want to make my own uh, tutorial. But I'll tell you what, that tutorial has been the most effective way for people to learn because they actually have to use Vim to move through the tutorial. So that's, um, and when it comes to memorizing the key combinations, um, there's another thing called Vim Genius out there that I'll talk about and one in the editor video. And it, um, it's better. In fact, the guy that made Vim Genius added some of my changes that I suggested. He didn't have um, control left bracket to, to cover um, escapes, for example. So that's now all there. Um, let's see here. Yep. Using FZF Frenzy in Vim is your friend. I use Doom Emacs for a lot of my writing. I don't know anything about that, so I might have to look into that, into this leader thing, FR for fuzzy find. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't, I use, I use the shell. I use the shell for finding things. I use the find command for finding things. I don't use some new tool that I have to download. I use things that are on the system because my priorities are being able to use any system and that's not everybody's priority and we're going to talk about that in the editor's video um thanks for the tips uh trying to find out more about readme repos i found this oh crap because of rob's apparent affinity for awesomeness i figured he'd enjoy it it's funny because i actually um i curated a list of awesome readme's contributed to to messengers awesome readme development by creating awesome that's that's nice scream this this awesome readme's thing that's what i want to do with readme.world i just want to i want a place for people to post their readme's and when i talk about readme's i'm talking about big readme's not like little ones in fact some of the best knowledge i've ever found has been in a readme because because people that are writing them know that you can't write a whole book on it you got to just get the, the data out so I'll come back to that. That's a huge topic. Um, I'm actually gonna, I, when I woke up this morning, I was inclined to go start working on it again, just with the Pandoc version. Goal-oriented mindset. Um, interesting. Leningrad. Kabiet. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying reading Russian with you guys, speaking it. Uh, I'm a little bit groggy this morning. All right. Um, it's just me in here anyway, so. Uh, let's see. I put some Bee Gees music over North Korea marching. Oh. <laughs> um, ice cream. <laughs> Five electric toothbrushes and a steam cleaner. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, Kings is in great. Been away, forgot to, here I am. Got to reinstall this car. I didn't read anything, though. I was looking for a guinea pig um, for the new audio setup on stream. I haven't got the equipment yet, so we'll, we'll do that later. I am... Um, some people here are asking about Udemy, and um, I probably should make a video about that. Um, I'm not against Udemy. I just... this A few of the Udemy's that I've seen that are people who have recommended to me are not coming from people with experience uh, so others have people that have great experience so just like anything else it has to be curated in my opinion and that's really really hard to do because curating content means you have to have opinions and opinions are somewhat unpopular today so um you know i don't i don't know so if somebody wants to try you to me I, I i probably you know don't say ne never say never but I probably won't ever make videos for Udemy because, and I've talked about this in my blog, my 
approach is the community. I think the community is a big part of how the learning is happening. And this Discord chat is a good example of that. There's learning and there's help going on that's independent of me. So I would rather take the approach of using a modern media, uh, YouTube videos and such, that, that encourages community at the same time. And, and Twitch is, frankly, the only thing that does that. I mean, YouTube is trying to catch up with that, but, but Twitch is uniquely suited to do this. So I would actually encourage more people to come into the community on Twitch, and then, I'll, if anything, I'll move to uh, some sort of level of subscribers for premium content or for the random news ranting and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because those are like true, true community members. The class I'm taking was really expensive, and I think I got it for 20 bucks. Yeah, I will never offer content for 20 bucks. And that's one of the reasons that I'm telling you I don't find it valuable. If you're if you're not, I mean, if you're going to buy a video for 20 bucks, go find an updated, more recent book that's been written on the topic. You know, usually, and, and I hate saying this because I've, 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 I've ranted against books in places in my blog before. Books fall behind, they get out of date, they're being made with money, they're killing trees, but they have a singular voice, so at least you have that in Udemy. Uh, but there's some other things that are going on. So I looked into why, why he wanted me to do it blah, 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 in, in a VM, and it was clear I had to hack other VM on my network, so it's not illegal, but I don't really mind. I have my wife's Mac anyway for hacking. Oh, okay. Well, as long as you are on your own network, you're not breaking any laws. Nope, you're not. In fact, you don't even have to be on your network. There's things you can do that are not illegal that are using other people's computers. Uh, they can track, haha, they can track you if you cross over into another person's network. Uh, no, they, well, they can track any IP as long as they can, I mean, almost anything can be tracked, almost. Um, but it, it's just how difficult it is to, to track it. And there's some ways of doing things that make things illegal to track. That's what VPNs and Tor are all about. But Tor, with the right setup, there's, there's people afraid that people are going to that some of the governments are going to give 51 percent of the Tor nodes, and when they do, they'll be able to track everything. So, anyway, just practicing, I guess. I'm not really interested in it. Solid firewall, yeah. People, some people sometimes fear getting into cybersecurity because they're, they think they're thinking they, it feels like they're doing something wrong. And, and the truth is you're not doing anything wrong. In fact, the world needs more pen testers. So they wouldn't be paying. The whole attitude towards that has changed. And, and the video um, uh, about the million dollar hacker covers this. So uh, he went to federal prison for doing exactly the same thing. He's now a millionaire for literally the same thing. The difference is, is they made it legal and they said, hey, give us a bug bounty and go find it and tell us about it. He did. In Linux, your router usually is the first line of defense. Yep. Uh, what's a good VPN to use with Kali? Uh, I recommend Proton Mail as the VPN. What Proton Mail? Proton VPN because it comes with Proton Mail, and so since you already have that, you're using it. Uh, they are based in Switzerland, so they're not going to have a fail like they had at Nord. Um, another VPN that I really like is Molvod. Molvod is like a highly secure system. So if you just want a uh, like a casual VPN and you're not particularly interested in pulling a Snowden, then, you know, um, I think Proton VPN is fine. But if you really, really, really want to go full Snowden, um, you might want to send cash to Molvod and then nobody has any record of who you are. And they so even if they tracked your your IP back to where you are, um, they would have no records of who that person is. You still should not, if you're, if you're going full Snowden, you still should not connect to Mulvad from your home. You'd have to do it. I mean, the, the FBI has caught people before by triangulating coffee shops in the area and finding the people that were all using the, the same VPN. So even this is not safe. So, you know, if it's, it's tricky, right? So there's, there's the one guy that caught, they thought if they were to go, to each of his um, 
That's what they did. They they knew that only one person used a particular VPN in the whole region. So, like, for me, if I were to go Snowden on things, and I know I can't. That's just why I won't. <laughs> um, I mean, I would have to travel, like, very, very far away. So, what they did is they just they just went to the internet service providers and they said, okay, not that many people in this area know how to use a VPN. So, until VPNs become commonplace, yeah. We're kind of screwed up. And and of those people who use a VPN, um, you know, if you suddenly use a VPN that's not common, like Molvod, now you're really sticking out, right? So so even if you go, even if you drive 50 miles every weekend to do your hacking or your Snowden stuff, you're going to see, they're going to find you because they're going to eventually see, oh, hey, this one person is using Molvod against all the other ones. Oh, let's say, oh, there's 10 people using Molvod within 100 miles. This is how they find them. 10 people are using Molvod within 100 miles. Okay, well, that's nice. All right, so, so let's triangulate their location and let's isolate the people who are using this, these, this Molvod on, with the ISP because the ISP has to give over everything. And then they just go check every one of those IPs. That's how they got them. So there, there's really no true anonymity. I mean, you can, if, if somebody, if somebody's really bound and determined to find you, there, and you use a computer that connect, connects to the internet, and you don't mask how you're doing it, they will find you. So, the, the truth is, the best way to use this is nobody wants to hear this, but the true way to do a Snowden is to use a distributed network that doesn't use any encryption or any VPN at all. And now you're talking about sending content and data around using GPG. And that that is really the true way to, to do this. And this is what terrifies governments. Because, and this is why they're so afraid of strong encryption, strong file encryption. Because if you can have a file that is encrypted um, that nobody can read, right? And once and, and nobody can trace, you can't trace a file. So so if you put the files on the internet or the you know, you don't even have to be deep web. It can be like straight up internet. You can even post it to GitLab for God's sakes. And other people can get that file and they can download it and they can use it and they won't even know. In fact, you can, I've done this, you can, you can use DD or a tool of some kind to put encrypted files into other media. So now you're just sending pictures around of your vacation and they've got encrypted data in them. So those kind of techniques are much, much, much harder to, to track down. But they're they're related to a completely different form of of you know spy craft. They're they're not they're about transfers transferring of information, not about breaking into things. So if you need an if you need an IP address to attack something and you don't want that IP address tracked, you know, you can add as many possible things to your system as you want to. Um but the first time you use a VPN, you're you're going to be suspect. The only the only way to get around that, um, I mean, you could still there's there's you, you could have multiple accounts. I mean, it gets really exhausting at a certain point. And frankly, most hackers who get caught are just too lazy. They're too tired, because to do it properly, to do it properly take is exhausting. You know, you'd. You have to have multiple accounts and on multiple different VPN providers and you have to switch them regularly and you have to, you know, move around the country in different ways regularly. I mean, if, if you're going to if you're going to truly do like a Snowden level kind of thing and Snowden wasn't breaking into thing, by, by the way, Snowden was just sharing information. That's that's he could get a, he could have got away with encryption on that. I mean, they got him because of his email, you know. And if you, by the way, if you were to use Proton Mail, you know that's that's a case where they could not have taken out Snowden because they could no Snowden didn't go down because they were trying to pin him to an event uh, where he had cracked into a thing. They were trying to catch him because he had stolen information and disclosed it. It's a different thing, and so he had 
Uh, so in order to find him, that's a different task. In order to find him, they went to um, great lengths to do that, including compromising the email, his email provider, and ordering them to give the keys up so that they could decrypt Snowden's email. If Snowden had been using ProtonMail, which um, is the subject of the the founder's talk on TED, he would never he would be fine. They would never have found it because the um, because ProtonMail doesn't even have the keys. They, if they if they were forced to give you the keys, they couldn't do it. The only the only thing ProtonMail could be forced to do that would ever compromise you is they could be ordered, which they can't be because they're Switzerland. But they could be ordered to write a bug into their JavaScript code that runs on your web browser and to and to keylog the things that you type. It's the only way you could do that. So if you don't use if you use ProtonMail Bridge or use or use ProtonMail from your phone, you're not subject to that. The only the only weakness in the entire ProtonMail system is the JavaScript that's being used in in the web browser. Because then what they would do is they would they would compromise the website for a specific account, and then they could watch your t- your keystrokes, and then they could get the password for your keys, and then they could they they'd have to order them to give the keys over also like that it was Snowden, and then they could decrypt the keys. It's like it, any government that can pull that off in Switzerland <laughs> would would be like a miracle worker because there's laws against it, I think. So. Um, you know that's that's a big deal. Let's go back to the Discord, um, and I'm gonna publish this as the news for today. Um, oh, I'm not gonna go through the, the rest of the news today. I'm just gonna do the Discord review. Um, all right, what we got? If you're live booting USB, you can't upgrade, right? That's true. Okay. Thanks for helping Kings out there. So Rick, Vim, it's faster because you don't need to move your hand or mouse. Also, every time you finish typing, hit the escape button in the rather farther corner, in the farthest corner of your keyboard. Well, I don't do that. And you should never remap escape. You should use control left bracket, which is not taught in any book or any tutorial I've ever read. All I had to do was Google it. I was like, I was tired of hitting escape and I refused to remap it to caps lock, which is what everybody does. And I've I've had some people remap it to JK even. No, don't do it. The whole point of using VI is that you use VI. And using JK or caps lock remapped is not VI, it's Vim. So just use control the bracket and I mean it's hard I, I won't lie it's harder on your pinkies you gotta have good pinkies but if you um, but if you yeah this whole thing for having your, your left pinky on on caps lock no way there's a lot of people who do that but I hate that I really do I hate it I'll never do that and I, I strongly advise against it that's as bad as teaching people to use the arrow keys the arrow keys are now finally supported in VI, but they haven't been supported in VI for 20, 30 years. So the reason, in fact, there's a, some more talk down here below. The reason that VI doesn't have those things is because it was created at a time when mice didn't exist. So H, J, K, and L are the only thing you had. Gave it, gave it any thought about assigning keys in normal mode. Looks like they went by assigning according to mnemonics or command names. I don't I don't think that is true. I don't have any proof of that. As if expecting people to recall command names before usage, no. Instead of muscle memory. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that assuming. I I I mean, no. And here we have Raritan's famous yeah, Vim sucks. Unless you're a keyboard warrior. Um I agree. I and, and I remember the day it, that I mean the way you're saying it I don't I, I don't really agree with how you're saying it but um the day 
I remember the day I was looking out the window, teleport, and I committed to myself I was no longer going to use Pico or Joe. I was using Joe, I think. And I said, no, I'm going to use VI. I'm going to force myself to use VI. I don't care how much it hurts. Because I watched the admins that I really looked up to downstairs just ridiculously blowing everything away with VI. I was like, these guys know what they're doing. And they weren't just cool. They were efficient. They were professional. They were awesome. So so that's why I say use VI as God intended. <laughs> you know, don't don't mess with it too much. You know, I, I do mess with it in Vim when I'm doing coding, but but I but the but the, the core memory, like changing escape is stupid. I mean it's just really stupid if you want to use more than one computer. If you want to use just one computer and customize the shit out of it and not use Emacs or VS Code, go for it. Basically, you're just building your own editor at that point. That's sort of like VI. But if you, if you, if that's your thing, if you, but if you really want the power that VI offers, which above all is ability to use it anywhere, then mapping any key to escape is dumb. Because you, you can't do it on the system you log into. And you gotta understand, I, I lived on... 20, 30 systems a day. None of which had my Vim Marcy on there. You know? Um, and I didn't feel like automating the deployment of my customizations and stuff. So, so no. Just no. <laughs> um, I like the idea of not leaving the keyboard. And not leaving typewriter position. Yeah. I don't think they go about it wrong at all. I think they did the best that they could with what they had. I really do. Uh, zero to go to the start of a line dollar um, let me think about that uh, I don't use either of those ever <laughs> so I don't know what you're doing but so yeah I mean there's probably half of the Vim commands or the VI commands I don't even use them I use capital I to go to insert to the beginning of a line Zero is great if you want to go to the zero position, to the very first position. But the really important thing to learn about VI that I think everybody in this chat is missing is, is if you really truly want to master VI, you're going to, you're going to master slash first. Slash is more important than any other navigation command. In fact, I almost don't remember any of them, like navigating between words and scrolling by words, count and all that stuff. No. If you want to simplify VI and Vim, just learn slash really well. Learn slash and learn T. So T will take you to the next word that has that letter. And slash will take you to the next word that has, the, it matches the word and it goes to that. So if you do that, and, and then of course, you know, the line number stuff. And then other than that, the people see me do this all the time, but the, the key repeats and the screen terminal updates are so fast now that all of the other like move by one word, move by paragraph and stuff, not really relevant anymore. They really aren't. I mean, they might have been. They might have been back when it took forever to scroll your screen or to update your screen. But these days, you don't need them. These days, you can just hold HJKNL and just watch it repeat. And I know that sounds lame to really hardcore VI people, but it's still VI and it's just as fast. And if you have to go a super long way, just use slash and search for the thing or use a line number and find a line. Um, particularly when you're doing markdown and you have single lines that are like 300 you know, characters in them. So you really need to learn slash. And I'll, I'll talk about that. I'm glad, I, I'm glad we went over that. Um, and that just really makes, you know, a lot less cognitive overhead for how you're using the tool. Um, try out a few VimRCs, yep. And then we're going to get into a section here that I'm just going to have to skip over and I, I'm taking too much time. Um, if I do this configuration thing and then con connect a remote system via SSH and work with Vim over SSH. Mm -hmm. I won't have my config active. You absolutely won't. Nope. And that's what we're talking about. I have my laptop and desktop as the same, but that is not a work environment like a system in. Yep. And I, Raritan, I appreciate you, you said that. Because that's really the key. It's like, what are you doing? So the choice is either learn it broken or don't lose your edge over remote. Yep, it is. If you interpret it that way, I don't. 
try out my R VimRC. Um, Rodin has an interesting VimRC. Um, I, it's nothing I would ever use. And I'm, I mean that as nicely as I can. <laughs> I kind of went off in the chat, but I'm not, I'm not a fan of that VimRC at all because it really, really stops you from being able to use multiple systems. And I'm, that's not my goal. So if your goal is to be a cybersecurity expert or a system administrator, using this VimRC will break you, seriously break you. Don't do it. Um, probably run back to VS Code. No, I, you know what? VS Code is not bad for the right thing. In fact, if you are doing development all the time on a single system, particularly if it's web development and you're moving stuff around a lot or you're writing, then VS Code is great. I've switched to VS Code when I'm doing web development sometimes because I just want to be on one computer and um, I want to click on a button and have it refresh and there's a bunch of cool little widgets and stuff. It's a great pseudo IDE. So I'm not I'm not against VS Code, but um, VS Code is a different work uh, use case. You know, you're doing development, you're not doing other stuff. Anyway. Only use it if you need it. I love it for searching faster in mine. I know these were the lines. Um, Vim, it's image blah, 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 blah. Uh, CIW, yep. What does that even mean? Deleted entire word. Yeah, I regularly use C and D commands all the time. C, C, I use CI and CW and CB all the time. It's probably the, one of the most common ways of... It's so much faster than deleting them all and then doing it. It changes the given word that you're on. Or capital C, I use that all the time. Capital C changes the whole line to the end of the line. The whole word types I type a new one. <laughs> I used to double click and type away like a Neanderthal, but now I see the light. Easy to remember commands like C I W. <laughs> oh a cervic I kinda chuckling with you because everybody goes through that. But I promise you once you learn the commands, you'll never go back. If you truly learn all the VI stuff you'll get so fast you'll never leave the keyboard and you won't even be able to help somebody use VI because you won't remember what you typed it's like learning to play the piano it really is and not everybody wants to learn to play the piano you know yeah it's, it's for autists I prefer IntelliJ arrow keys same as B blah 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 yeah well you're doing software development you're really really into software I'm very conflicted I want to be in the cool kids club acerbic uh, and this is where I got a little pissed. So Raritan says VI is not cool. <laughs> VM users are not cool. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah? Why don't you go say that at a DEF CON? And then, and then watch all your devices melt into mush. <laughs> oh, I just think it's so funny. VIM users are not cool. <laughs> I know you're probably trying to make a joke there. But when I first read that, it pissed me off bad i was like oh yeah oh yeah hmm what's your ip <laughs> again i'm trying to protect all y'all from look if you are a software developer and that is what you do that's what you love and that's what you do all the time use intellij use vs code use fucking eclipse i don't care if you are a cybersecurity expert or, or a system administrator or or anyone who's in IoT, who uses multiple things, who has to be regularly editing files on multiple devices all over the place that you do not get the luxury of configuring, then you need to use VI, not Vim. You need to use VI and you need to use Bash. End of, end of argument. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Anyway, I should probably stop swearing. I think I made somebody angry. <laughs> All right, so let me grab a cool video. This is a pretty good video. I won't lie. This is, I find this, this video is really interesting because I guess, what's this guy's name? Somebody's accused me of looking like him before when I put my glasses on. I'm not trying to be him, I probably swear. Um... He's made a lot of money in the bug bounty thing, but uh, but he has a great video where he says, I don't even know how to code. I mean, he's really, he seems like a really great guy, really nice guy, but 
Um, he doesn't know Vim. He doesn't know Patch. He doesn't know Terminal. He doesn't know anything. I mean, he knows a lot, obviously. I think he's not giving himself enough credit, frankly, because he, to know how to find a bug is not, not easy. It takes a different kind of knowledge. So, anyway. Um, this guy, however, is uh, really, really clueless unless... Well, I'm going to take that back. First of all, he's... Yeah, okay. So... Here, here's here's a problem that I have with it. I put the little poop emoji. Um, if you are trying to turn your VI into VS Code, you're you're try you're you're doing the wrong thing. Because, okay, if you really like VS Code that much, and you find yourself editing code more than anything else, more than using a remote system, then use VS code don't make your vim into VS code if you're gonna do see this is I, I still probably have some things to figure out here but um vim is not Emacs you know if you if you find yourself trying to make vim look like Emacs and behave like Emacs which is what Emacs does it you know you could making your vim into Emacs is sort of equivalent of making your vim into VS code and if you find yourself doing that that's probably because you are spending all your day on a single computer with a single editor and if that is your way of working then you yeah customize the crap out of it that's fine that's fine in fact I do that with vim to an extent you know I allow myself to use visual stuff um, and I just know that when I get on another system, I won't have that. But, um, but if but at a certain point, it come, becomes such a thing that you might as well just use VS Code, short of the fact that it takes literally five seconds to start up. So when I'm editing code, that drives me nuts. Yeah, if you're going to start up VS Code, you have to have it open all the time, and it just it's a memory leaks and all kind of thing. So I I'm not a fan for 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 that unless you. If you're working on several projects at the same time. So I guess I could see wanting to make it more configurable, more of an IDE. But to some at some point you're gonna lose like nurture and all this stuff. At some point, learn using nurture is just I just hate it. I really hate it. I really, really hate IntelliSense too. Because I can find the full page of documentation using links in my question mark a, a type alias. That that takes the same amount of time for someone to get a hint through IntelliJ. And they get that little hint, which covers their screen. It's super annoying if you're a veteran programmer. And then, then it gives you the hint and a little bit of, of documentation about it. It's never enough. You want to see an example. You want to maybe read about the problem it has. So you want to actually do a search. If you need to look up something because you don't know it, you don't want to depend on the IntelliJ little prompt. You want all of it. Right? So... And, and the reason people do this is because they're really annoyed because they have to go open up the graphic browser they have to put them up, they have to wait for all the, the stuff to load up and they spend so much time they spend so much time and they're searching that they don't realize that if I so for example he's, he's searching for create connect create connection this is an alias this looks like it's JavaScript so let's do that so let's do I'm gonna show an example so so if I do I can just do a search like this. I can say uh, JavaScript create uh, connection. And, you know, one, two. Okay, so MySQL create connection. Okay, there we go. Is it a MySQL thing or is it a .NET thing? I don't know. So see, look at this. I have like three or four different like things about this. And I can go to the first one. I open it up. And this is W3Schools, which is not un unusual. And within literally less than 10 seconds, I just got my answer with a full example screen so being able to do that and then go back to my code I open back my code up I can even have another pane open and do that whole search down here and then switch back to the code instantaneously and so the reason this IntelliJ stuff is stupid it's like the opposite it's like stupid J is because it's based on this idea that they can communicate everything about what you're doing now tab completion has some merit I will get, I'll admit that Tab completion is sometimes nice to have because you, it's, there's a lot of typing for some of these really long, stupid things. Um, but 
you know, but being able to look a thing up, you should be back and forth between panes all the time. And you're probably going to need to do that anyway, because you need to run test code. If you're on the command line, you need three panes. You need one pane for the documentation, you need one pane for the code, and you need one pane to run the tests. And if you're lucky, you can automate a test loop and just watch that pane rather than having to go over to it all the time. So this is part of terminal mastery. You have to get this stuff. And if you if you keep going down the wrong path and and you know trying to, to turn your VI into VS Code, then you know you're spending your time on the wrong things. You really are. So I just I want to just say that I, I need to do videos on all of that. But I, I, I had to answer, address it because it was it's coming up in the chat. All right, so here we go. Um, what we got here? In my VimRC, I have a filter script um, that does sort of what you want. I, I, I'm not a fan of this. I've, I have never, as I said in the chat, I've never seen a professional of any kind pipe stuff into Vim. It's just not, it's just not done. Um, usually they would pipe it into grep or or set or awk or something like that or just even straight up bash and so i don't recommend using vim as a as a filter tool at all um it'll do it it'll it'll load it up into memory nice and great but i just i'm not a fan of this is i've never seen this usage usage at all and um it i i seriously don't recommend that because it loads everything into memory whereas if you use a grep set and all that stuff it doesn't go into memory so, I mean, I have opened files on accident, you know, binaries or something with Vim, and it handles it pretty well, but I've almost crashed machines because it loads it all into memory. So if you're, if you're, if you're catting or grepping, if you're sending all of the data from a file into a Vim script, just because you want to filter it, bad idea, because it's going to, it's going to blow your machine up. Again, this is, this is coming from somebody who's done system administration and watch stuff on tiny machines and you don't, I mean, I, you know, you just don't ever want to load large files into Vim. Vim wasn't made to do that. Um, if you want to filter stuff out, then you need to be using set awk or grep, which go line by line. And then those things do not, they have a better approach to memory. And so they never load the whole file into memory. It's really, really important. So, so this whole section about piping stuff to Vim or Sublime or everything is just completely irrelevant. I would never do any of that. And I strongly advise against it. Um, okay, uh, speaking of efficient remaps uh, at the job, we didn't use semicolon, so semicolon is remapped to the enter key. <laughs> well, maybe. I, 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 I'm kind of mixed on this. I never use semicolons in JavaScript. I think they're stupid. Um, I used to love them and think people who didn't do them were stupid, <laughs> but I've changed my mind on that, and I have a video on that that I'll talk about. It's actually a guy who makes a really, really great case for not using Java semicolons. Um, I didn't even need to lift the, the right hand up to hit enter as a stretch of pinky. <laughs> Remapping stuff like that to enter is just not a good idea. All right. Welcome, Kisor. Welcome, Black Price. Uh, Vim, yay. Uh, holy shit, this is a thing. Say hi to the precious plastic universe recycling system run by the people. Interesting. Kind of cool. Might want to talk about that. Uh, not all the people in the precious plastic network in the U.S., but all of them are actually in your neck of the woods. What? Huh. I'll have to look at that. And then this is me ranting, 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 ranting. You know what? I'm going to delete all of this. Because I just covered it all. And the problem with words is that they come when you type all caps, people think you're yelling. <laughs> and I think I just displayed myself much more calmly than this. So I'm going to delete all of these. I don't want my silence to be taken as com as agreement though and I want to make sure that everybody knows about this video so I'm going to go highlight it right now um, and I just really want people to know that that um, it's okay to talk about things and have different opinions and stuff but um, you know I just would respect it if you would like at least be Mr. Miyagi about it and say you know, Rob has his particular style, um, as opposed to, you know, teaching them absolute heresy, which is like remapping escape. That one is not anything I ever want anybody to do. Anyway, okay, I'm going to go highlight this video and be done for the day. And 
we'll come back and do something else. <laughs>